YouTube fam, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Tina and I make videos on lifestyle, home, and DIY projects every single week. I am super excited for today's video because it's one that I've been wanting to do for quite a while. So today I thought it'd be fun to go on a little field trip and we're going to visit a creative resource center. And if you don't know what that is, it's basically a thrift store for arts and craft supplies which sounds like heaven to me, to be honest. So I'm gonna take you guys along and we're gonna shop for some DIY supplies and actually DIY something with the supplies that we buy today. And I actually have never heard of a creative reuse center before. One of you guys actually DM'd me and told me about this and said that you had one local to you. So I checked if there was one local to LA and there actually is, and I'm super excited to visit. And this is really great if one, you are like me and you have a lot of supplies that you don't use and you just need to donate. And that way your unused supplies will go to a new home where hopefully it will be created into something beautiful and two if you love secondhand shopping this is definitely the way to go and you will also find really affordable supplies before we get started don't forget to like and subscribe down below and let's go ahead and find all the things that need to be donated which I feel like are probably a lot so let's see what we find so here's everything that I have gathered up so far and you'll see that we have some wood pieces over here, some Christmas decorations that I just never got to use. And a lot of this stuff is just things that I don't think I'll be using anytime soon and it's kind of been taking up space in my craft storage. So I think it'll be better in someone else's home. Even some of this stuff, which is things that I've gotten in PR from Cricut, which is really pretty, but I don't think I will use it. So I think someone's gonna be really happy to find this. We also have this colorful twine, which I don't think I'll use. You guys know me, I like to stick to my neutrals. So I think this is a good amount of things that we could send over to them. I'm gonna pack everything up and let's go head over to the store. Hello from voiceover Tina. So we drove about 20 minutes away over to Pasadena and made it over to Remainder's Creative Reuse. The moment that I walked in, I just saw so many shelves filled with supplies ready for their second life. They had yards of fabric and so many fun colors and patterns. There are plenty of sewing supplies and knitting supplies to browse through. And I also spotted a few wood pieces. They had ribbons and trimmings and glitter and so many beautiful things. I could imagine making so many cool projects with the supplies that they had there. And I also spotted the main item that I was looking for, which was yarn. And I mostly was looking for colors that I didn't already have. And I also tried to find some yarn with some interesting textures. What do you think of the store? What do you think of everything? It's so cool. There's so much stuff to look at. It's a little overwhelming, but in a good way. It was so much fun browsing through all the aisles and this place really is a thrift store for arts and crafts supplies. And just like any thrift store, you will need to rummage through a lot of stuff before you find what you're looking for. Or you might even discover a hidden gem that you didn't even know you needed. And best of all, everything is super affordable and you're helping divert tons of waste from landfills. Remainders is also a nonprofit creative space and provides programs for the community, so I think that's really awesome. I will have their info below, but if you're interested in checking out a creative reuse center in your local area, be sure to look for one online and also double check to see what types of supplies that they're looking for. And I hope you guys have just as much fun shopping for secondhand supplies like I did. All right, you guys, I am back and I have all of our supplies here. I really did not try to get too many things because it is kind of crazy in there. It's very overwhelming because there's just so much stuff. So if you do end up going to a creative reuse store, I would definitely say to go in with a plan. So my plan was to look for yarn. So I grabbed a bunch here and this one I think is a trim, which is really interesting. I'm going to have to figure out how to do it. I'll figure it out later. I also grabbed some fun colors, so this pale pastel yellow, and then this multicolored one, which I thought was super cute, so I just could not resist, so I grabbed this as well. This one is a really beautiful color, and it's a little bit more chunky, and it feels super soft, and I just love this one, it's so pretty. And then I also saw that they had a bunch of these, like, purse handles, and I thought it was so cool. So this one is like a tortoise, pattern. Look how cool this is. Oh my gosh. I've always wanted to make one of those macrame market bags and I think this is going to be really awesome for it. Or you can even use this as the top of a wall hanger. I think that would look so cool as well. And then I also grabbed these like oval ones and these are more of a bamboo shape. Oh, that's so funny. It says personalize it. I haven't seen anything like this before, but I thought it was just so cool, so I had to pick these up. I also bought this embroidery thread because those are kind of pricey, so just grabbed a whole bunch in a beautiful color palette. I also grabbed a bunch of these needles and this 
was only a dollar. It comes with a few packs in here, I believe. It was so crazy because like in there you could find some really old art supplies. You can tell that these are probably from like the 60s. So I grabbed all of these for just a dollar. So that is such a good steal. For everything that I got, I spent a total of $9.06, which is amazing because I got a whole bunch of items and usually yarn is pretty expensive. So I'm really pleased with everything and I'm really excited to go back and just find even more treasures. And for my DIY project today, it inspired me to use something that I've been hoarding for quite a while. It's just been sitting in my closet and I haven't been making use of it. So I picked up this loom from Ikea. It is in the kids section but it's gonna work perfectly to create a wall hanging. So that's why I wanted to grab some yarn and I'm really excited for this project. So I'm gonna put this all together and hopefully we can create a beautiful wall hanging with some of the yarn that we got and wish me luck. Today's donation reminded me to take a look at the supplies I already had and I'm really glad that I came across my little Ikea loom that I've had sitting in my closet forever. It was pretty easy to set up and it came with all of the parts I needed. It even came with these colorful weaving bands which I am definitely keeping but I'm not using it for this project. It also came with this mustard yellow thread but I wanted to use white thread so I'm going to use that to string it all together with something I already had at home. And the instructions not only showed you how to set up the loom, but it also showed you how to use it as well. I actually found out about this loom from Drew from Lone Fox, and this is such a great find. But I would also like to take this time to let you guys know that as I was looking for a price for this loom, it was nowhere to be found on the IKEA site, at least in the US. So sadly, it has been discontinued. And if you're lucky, you might be able to find it in the last chance section at your local store. But I will list a few other loom options below if you're interested in checking one out and getting one for your yourself. To start the project, I'm adding on a piece of paper at the bottom and I'm weaving it over and under the warp yarn as a placeholder. Once we complete our hanging, we're actually gonna remove this and this is just gonna ensure that we have enough yarn to tie it off at the bottom. As a shed stick, I'm using a piece of wood that perfectly fit onto our loom and I'm weaving that over and under the yarn as well. And this is great to have to separate the warp thread so that you can weave right through the opening in one direction rather than one by one every single time. With the same yarn that I used for the warp, I'm going to weave that back and forth over and under for about 10 rows and this is going to create a footer at the bottom. And what I'm doing here is a basic weave, also known as a flat weave. And I have learned pretty much everything about loom weaving through With Wendy's video. I will have that link down below. As I was working on my piece, I kept referencing her tutorial and it goes really in depth. So I would definitely suggest that one. I'm still such a newbie, so I might miss some things in my tutorial, but I will talk a little bit about the different types of weaves I'm doing to create my piece. To start our actual wall hanging, we're going to start by creating a fringe at the bottom and we're doing a raya knot. So I'm placing both ends of the yarn through two of the warp threads and then I'm pulling through to create a long fringe piece. This totally reminds me of creating a lark's head knot to create a similar effect, but instead of working with horizontal threads, we're wrapping it around vertical threads. This fringe is going to add some nice texture and volume and also help hide the footer at the bottom. So I'm using the beautiful rust yarn that we found at the Creative Reuse store and I'm doing a flat weave for about two rows just to get started. And then I created a smaller block of this color by weaving it across about a third of the way. And to be honest, a majority of this piece is going to be using a basic flat weave and you can really change this up by adding in new colors, the thicknesses of the yarn, or also creating different shapes depending on where you start and stop your weave. So there really is so much that you can do with this basic weave. One major tip that I have for you guys is to never pull too hard onto your yarn. Otherwise, it will start to move the warp threads inwards. So what I like to do is just to take my finger and then pull onto the outside warp threads to ensure that it's never too tight. Another thing to keep in mind is that once you run out of yarn, you can go ahead and just leave it hanging. And then we're going to clean it up at the end so you don't have to worry about knotting it after every single piece. 
It is another day of DIY and I wanted to show you guys my progress so far. So here's what my setup looks like. This is really nice because you can put like an iPad right here and just watch while you weave away. Or you can even do this in front of a TV, which is so great that this is an upright loom. So I give this a 10 out of 10 so far. So here's what the pattern's looking like. I'm super in love with it. And so far we've only done two really simple weaves. So I've just done a flat weave with some chunkier yarn and then a flat weave but I did it so that it would change rows every single time so it gives us this really nice angle and I'll talk a little bit more about that as I finish the rest of this but really I just wanted to get the hang of it and not have to record myself and be under pressure so I'm going to get back into this and finish this tonight, hopefully. And as a beginner project, I think it's coming out really well. I wanna try out a couple other knots. I'm gonna leave it to voiceover Tina to take it over from here. All right, you guys. So like I mentioned, I really only did two different patterns so far, which was your basic flat weave and the Raya knots. And I basically continue to do those two techniques on this piece so far. So this really just goes to show that you can achieve such a unique look, even as a beginner to loom weaving. I really didn't go into this project with a set design. I kind of just adjusted it as I went along and I think having no plan is the best plan sometimes. The key here is to really have a nice color palette of a few colors and to also use different types of yarns to add an interest. So you can see that I'm using a thinner yarn, some textured yarn, as well as a big chunky yarn. And I think that works out perfectly. To create more of those fringe pieces, I added a few rows of those Raya knots again, but this time I tried using macrame cording, which actually worked really great here. It added in a little bit of a different texture to this piece, and all you have to do is to brush it out to really give it volume, and it looks fantastic. I wanted to create some big loops with my chunky yarn, so I found a tutorial by Spruce and Linen here on YouTube. So we're gonna create some Raya loops, and basically you just wanna loop it behind one of the warp yarns, and then take the remainder of the yarn to create another loop that goes through the other one, and then you're gonna pull to tighten it. And from there, you're just gonna move on to the next warp repeating these loops. And at first it was a little bit confusing, but I did watch the tutorial a few times before I got the hang of it. And I think it adds in so much volume and makes it look super fluffy, which I love. You can make your loops as big or as small as you want, and you can even use thinner yarn for this as well. So in total, I only used three different patterns to create my wall hanging, and I'm quite surprised by how quickly I got the hang of it. Like I mentioned, I basically played the YouTube tutorials over and over as I was working on it, so that's totally the way to go when you're first getting started. It really does get easier the more you weave and understand how to create the patterns. And I hope you guys are enjoying this style of video. I know it's a little bit different than my usual DIY videos, but I've been really enjoying being more in front of the camera and just talking and hanging out with you guys. And please let me know in the comments if you guys are liking it as well. Feedback is always welcomed here on my channel. And I'm also really excited for what else is to come on this channel. I'm planning on upping the quality and the types of videos that I create here. Your continued support is so appreciated and there are so many new exciting changes that are coming really, really soon. And I just cannot wait to share with you guys what else we have in store. All right, so we're nearing the end of this weaving and I just found this project to be so relaxing and therapeutic to do. I would get lost in the weaving and even though this took hours to complete, it just went by so quickly because it was so much fun. So once we're done with our design, we're just gonna go ahead and create a header at the top here. So I'm gonna use the same yarn that I used for the warp and I'm gonna do about 10 to 12 rows of a basic flat weave. And at this point, I was really happy with the pattern, so that's why I stopped before getting to the top, but you can totally pick and choose how large or small you want your hanging to be. So here's how our weaving is looking so far, and we're gonna go ahead and just flip it over to the backside. To clean up all the loose ends, you can go ahead and use a yarn needle and then just weave it through a couple of the rows downwards, and then we're just gonna snip it. And for a few of the other loose threads, like for the Raya loops, I just knotted those up and snipped off the ends. 
So I finished my weaving last night and it looks so good. I'm really happy with how it looks. Like it is so cute and so fluffy. I'm obsessed with it. And to finish it up, we're basically just gonna cut it off of the loom. So you're gonna cut on the top here as well as the bottom pieces. And we'll be knotting it across one by one. So it's gonna look really good. And the last thing I wanna do is to put this on a dowel rod. So I have a couple options here. So I'm gonna cut those down and put it up and style it and reveal it to you guys. I'm so obsessed with our new little wall hanging and it was all thanks to a spark of inspo from our trip to the Creative Reuse store today. These colors and textures together just make me so incredibly happy. I cannot believe this is only using three different techniques and I'm excited to challenge myself even more for my next weaving. I cannot believe it took me so long to try weaving and I'm so happy that I did. I hope this video inspires you guys to look at some of your old supplies, go donate it, and then feel inspired to create something new with something old. This whole video was just so much fun for me to create and if you guys liked it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up down below. And I would also like to know what you guys think I should look for next time at the Creative Reuse store. I'm really excited to go back there and if you guys are in the area, I'll leave all their info down below. If you're inspired by today's project, don't forget to tag me on Instagram and I will leave it some love. And of course, so much love to you guys who already tagged me on Instagram. I will share it across the screen here. Thank you so much for watching and hanging out with me this week. Stay inspired and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.